Hey there, Fabian here back with another video where I will show you how you can improve your PHP scripts when using MySQL queries by caching the query results on the file system. Now, let me give you a quick example before going deep into this because it's most likely that this is not going to be for everyone. So, right here as you can see, we have a MySQL database with the profiles table that includes about 2 million and 400,000 rows in it. We have username, title, description, and is active and date time. This is randomly generated data so that I can populate the database much faster. As you can see, if I want to return profile.php username Fabian, it's going to load and it's going to load. And finally, after six seconds, it found the row in the database. And now if I refresh, it's instantly. And that's because the second call is taken directly from the file system and it doesn't even query the database anymore. If this seems interesting to you, in this video I'm going to show you exactly how I did it with a real world example broken down into few snippets of code. You've probably heard of cache and the caching term before. It is the process of storing data into a temporary location for faster access. I've also written a detailed blog post about this on my blog, so if you go to this link on grossfabian.com, I will make sure to leave a link in the description below. Now, let's talk about when and why you should use caching. Keep in mind, this highly depends on your situation and there is no definite answer that can apply to everyone, as everyone's project is quite different. Now, let me show you an example of where using cache is the right choice. We're back to this simple profile.php script that I've made that takes only one parameter, which is the username, and we're going back to the database where you can see the profiles table. This can be considered a very, very basic social media platform where people would access this profile link and they will want to see the title and description of your profile. Now, think about the fact that this profile can be accessed 100 times a day, 10,000 times a day, depending on how popular your profile is. In this case, database queries are way more expensive to the server resources than to read from a simple text file containing data from your server. Why would you want to run the same query over and over again if you know that the data that you're going to return is the same? Now, enough with the talking, let's go into the actual coding. So, as you can see, I have an empty folder right here. I will open it with Visual Studio Code because it's a free and pretty nice uh, editor. And right here, I will create an index.php file, which we're not going to use. And then I'm going to create init.php file. In here, I want to initialize my database connection, credentials for the database, and also the caching library that we're going to use. For now, it's empty. And then I will create another file. Let's call it database credentials.php. And now in here, I'm going to paste this code right here so that you can fill this for yourself because I will fill it with my database server, username, password, and the actual database name that you're going to use. So I will close this for now and then go right back to init and let's start with a database connection. Database equals new MySQLi and then we are going to enter database server, database username, database password, database name. Okay, we also need to import this. So we are going to require once and I'm going to require database credentials.php. Now, what I wanna do is check if we have any database errors, connect error, and then we're going to die with this exact error just so that we can see if there is any. Okay, I will save the code and then I will go right back to the index.php file and then I will require once init.php. Okay. And now I'm going to go to the browser and I'm going to assume that your server, your PHP, your MySQL and everything else is properly set up already. 
As you can see, we have no error, which means the database connection is working properly. Now, what I want to do is search for PHP fast cache, GitHub, and I will go right here to the GitHub page. I will search for composer and right here, I'm going to copy this, paste it right here into the terminal. And this is basically going to load the library directly into this folder. Again, you'll need to have composer already installed. As you can see, this created the vendor folder, which contains the PHP fast cache library. We're going to go back to init. I'm going to close all this up. And right here, I just want to say require once and then vendor autoload.php. This will make sure that the library is loaded so that we can use it. Okay, now let's go back right here and create a new file. I'm going to say profile.php. Okay, and what I want to do right now is initiate a profile username variable, which will basically check for the get username query parameter to make sure it's set. And then I'm going to use escape string function on get username. Else we have null. If not profile username, I'm just going to die and say no profile username specified. Of course, this is just for testing purposes. And right now, what I want to do is get my profile data, which is going to be as easy as this. Select all the data from profiles table where username equals and I will put the variable of the profile username right here just like this and then I'm going to go with fetch object and that would be it let's see I'm going to print r the profile and of course we actually need to go back to the index and copy this line of code because we need to have the database initialized and then I will save this up and let's go right here go to profile.php username and I will specify Fabian and of course it's searching through two million and a half rows from the database and there you go this is the profile and right now what we want to do is being able to cache these results of the profile query what I'm going to do is go to the init.php file and I'm going to start to initiate the cache configuration right here I'm going to say new php fast cache drivers I want the file driver and then I'm going to say config right here I'm going to input all my configuration this is already set by me these are my preferences if you need anything else you should go and look for the documentation on github there are plenty of options for this library and what I want to say right here is the path the path is going to be used to store these uh, text cache files with the data that we're going to input so I'm going to also create right here a new folder which is cache and then I will go back to the finder make sure this has a chmod 777 so that the script has access to it and has writing permissions and then I'm going to go right here and specify it as cache okay next one is prevent cache slams and I will set this to true cache slams timeout 20 and also secure file manipulation true now what are these lines these lines help prevent the cache from being generated multiple times and colliding with each other if the same resource is requested at the same time while the cache is being generated. It is an extra security layer which I would definitely suggest for you to use right away. I'm going to initiate PHP fast cache, cache manager, set default config and I'm going to pass in the cache config we just created. Right now I'm going to initiate another variable named cache and I'm going to say php fast cache cache manager and then I will get an instance for the files cache system. 
Alright, now let's test this out and I'm going to go in the browser. Alright, so it seems that we have a problem. The directory cache, okay, files could not be created. Alright, let's go back in the init.php file and I'm going to say right here, real path, dir, and then I will do this. This just makes sure that we have the correct path and uh, I will save it. Let's go in the browser, hit refresh and it seems that it's working because the query is processing. Okay, keep in mind, right now we only have the cache initialized. We don't actually make use of it. And right now what we want to do is start to use the actual caching. So go back to profile.php and right here I'm going to say cache instance and I'm going to use the cache variable that we just initialized and I'm going to say get item and here you will need to specify the key of the cache. So I could do something like this, profile. But keep in mind, this profile data is dynamic, so I'm going to give it a dynamic name, such as profile, question mark, username, and I'm going to say profile username right here. What we want to do is check if uh, this actual cache exists and is not expired. If is null cache instance, get then what we want to do is actually run this query and right now what we want to do is basically save this data that we have in this profile variable into the cache we use the cache instant we set the data for this variable to profile and then we're going to mention expires after 300 seconds for example five minutes then we want to use the main cache variable and then I'm going to save it and then right here I'm going to have the else function in case the cache already exists so I'm going to get with profile and then I will say cache instance get what this function does is basically return the data that you've saved to the cache I'm going to hit save and right here I'm going to hit refresh the first request is going to be from the database and the second request should be as fast as possible. Hit refresh again and as you can see it's instant. Right now this data is returned from the cache. Let's test this out. I will say right here echo database and right here I'm going to say echo cache. If we refresh right now you're going to see cache right here because the data is returned from the file system. Now, how much faster exactly? What I'm going to do right here is set a new timer so that we can see the execution time of this snippet of code. Time start, micro time, and I'm going to set the float to true. And below this snippet of code, I'm going to paste another snippet which will calculate the execution time of this code. So I'm going to save refresh and as you can see 0 0.00054 right now let's try to search for another profile I'm going to go in the database and I will copy this username which is again a randomly generated one just for testing purposes I will search for it right now and right now you can see it took about 6.5 seconds for this query to execute now if we hit refresh Again, it's cached and it's instant. Now, I want to make some extra points on this subject. If you're going to use this in a production setup where you would also have the ability to delete the user or change his details, you don't want to show the user outdated details from the cache. Once the user changes his details, the cache for this user should be deleted. How you can do that? It's pretty easy. I will just show you the command right here. In order to delete this cache, we can do the following. I'm going to say cache, delete item, and I'm just going to specify the key of this cache, which is the same one. I'm going to hit save, and right now if we reload, the first reload is from the cache, and the next one would be from the database, because we just reset it at the bottom. As you can see, it took about 6 seconds. So, if we remove this, the next one is also going to be from the database, but the future one is going to be from the cache. Congratulations, 
you just cached your first MySQL query. If you made it this far into the video and you like the content, I would definitely appreciate a like on the video. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any other questions regarding PHP caching. Otherwise, have a great day. Thank you for watching.